No, I'm her husband. Oh, no, I'm afraid she's closing down, madam. Oh, we're, we're going to Australia, uh, emigrating. Tomorrow. Yeah, I suppose it is a bit. We, we weren't going for a year, you see, because he wouldn't pay my fare. But what happened was, uh, Marge was left some money by her Uncle Jim. He died, you see. So she decided that if we sold her furniture, we'd probably... Ryan, what are you doing? Telling the story of your life? <laughs> it's a customer. Tell her I've packed up. I've already told her that. Then say goodbye. You're a busy man. I must say goodbye. I'm a busy man. Now get this machine packed up for Nina. Market cash on delivery. I'll be bloody glad to see the back of it. And when you see Stephen, you tell him what I said. And then you take that van down to old Joe's yard, tell him you've reconsidered and you'll take their price. And get a move on. I'll tell you one thing about down there. Down there, they want speed and efficiency. Who's that? Nobody. Only the householder, the breadwinner. Nobody in Portland or interested at all. Oh, a pretty good guess. Well, do I have to book in advance nowadays? No, of course not. No, I just... Uh, well, I wasn't it, expecting... It's half past three in the afternoon. What are you doing in your dressing gown? Oh, I was having a bath. <laughs> and where are your babies? Uh, Mum's taking them out. Uh -huh. Whose is this coat? Coat? Yeah, coat. Whose is this coat? What coat? This coat. Oh. Oh, yes, I see. Well, to whom does it belong? What? This coat. Well, how should I know? Has he gone? It's coming on to rain. I'd better bring the twins in. Has who gone? Eh? Has who gone? Hello, Frank. I didn't know you were here. He's home early. Yes. You said, has he gone? I asked, has who gone? Has who gone? Has who gone? Oh, I don't know. Uh, who? Oh, for goodness sake, Daphne, there's a man's coat in there. You come in and say, has he gone? It does not take a Sherlock Holmes to deduce that somewhere there's a man in the house. I am the householder and I'm trying to find out who. It's me, Mr. Bench. <sighs> oh. Hello, Mr. Grant. This is, uh, this is unexpected. I've been fixing some things up in Pamela's bedroom. Oh. Robin's very good at do it yourself. It's just what I want. It really is. It's just what my life needs. I like it. Oh, yes, so will I. It's very, very nice of you to pass it on to me. Well, I can't take it with me. Oh, I can't tell you how excited I am. Ooh, I'll be able to cultivate. You know, get back to basics and cultivate. Onions and potatoes, cabbages and swedes. I, I might even have a go at strawberries. Oh, I never tried strawberries. Well, I might have a go. You know, anything, everything. Just me and the land. Never feel lonely up here, I bet. No. No, you don't, no. Oh, I've, I've got this, uh, this little hut here as well. It's a nice place to go if you want to sit. Sometimes I just come up here and go in there. Read the paper, have a cup of tea. I shall miss the utmost of all, I think. My wife, Nina, is very well. Oh, is she? Oh, yes. Yes, she loves life in Corfu, loves it. Very happy, her and Iris, running that bar. Uh, we're sending her the hair-removing machine. Well, Marge never really got the hang of that. Only thin smoke, without flame, from heaps of cooch grass. Yet this will go on just the same, though centuries pass. Boy, oh boy. This is England. 
Um, uh, uh, about the art. Well, the only thing is, Marge says you'll have to pay for the F and F. The, the furniture and fittings. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, Robin, uh, I was in your father's office only this morning. Oh, were you, Mr. Benjamin? Yeah. I must say, our branch of the Streatham life's really looked up since your father took charge. Well, I've said that to Daphne, haven't I, Daphne? Yes, you mm. have, Frank. And I hear you're being highly successful yourself at the Merton branch. Well, I don't know about that. Well, Southern manager at your age, that's successful, all right. Influential contacts. Oh, good heavens, no, no, I wouldn't have said that, no, no. <clears throat> On holiday, are you? Uh... No, no. Yeah. Are you? No, no. No, as a matter of fact, I had a, an interview which finished a bit earlier than I thought. You know, that's why I'm home early. <laughs> Your father knows all about it. I'm sure Robbie doesn't mind if you skive off a bit, Dad. But I was not skiving off, Pam. I've already explained that. That's <laughs> great. <clears throat> Yes, I, uh, I must say, I didn't realise you two were so friendly. I mean, <laughs> of course, I saw you dancing together when I brought Pamela to the Streatham Life dinner dance, but uh, I didn't realise you've been seeing each other since then. You know? Oh, quite a lot, yes. Yeah, <laughs> nobody told me. Well... I think I know the answer to that, Mr Benj. Pamela is a married lady. Her husband is away. You might well have thought I was up to no good. Oh, good heavens, no. Robin. I know all the circumstances between Pam and Paul. I... I think we all feel it unlikely that he will return. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that my intentions are completely honourable. Oh, of course, of course, given the circumstances, I can't really say any more than that. No, no, no. Added no. to which, before I could say any more, I should have to speak to Father. Oh, yes. But having said that, I hope you follow me. Oh, yes, he does, Robin. I'm sure he does. Well, of course I do, definitely. Yes, that's what <clears> I just <throat> said, Frank. Yes, he said what he means, Dad. Yeah, I know he has. Yeah. And he loves the twins, don't you, Robbie? I think they're lovely children, Mr. Bench. Oh, they are, Robin. So, what more can I say? No, he can't say any more, can he, Frank? No, no, no I, I think you've been very uh, fair. Yes, Robin, uh, he has. Yeah. And if Pamela's happy, oh, I'm certainly happy. I'm, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> you know, Frank wanted your father to be godfather. But he was ill that day. Well, now he might I've be I've well. said as much as I can say. Yes, yes, of course you have. Yes. <clears throat> Sergeant Effie, aren't you? Yeah, I knew you were. I had one of your chop bars yesterday. Your picture's on the wrapper. Yeah, I, I, I bought one and, and I had it with me tea. I liked it. It's nasty weather, isn't it? Not that I mind. No, oh, no, it gives me a chance to have a few stairs. Last few stairs. I'm going to Australia tomorrow, you see. Be all right, I expect. Marge says it will. Mind you, I remember this place before it looked like this. The public baths used to be over there. to go down there every Saturday. Lovely old plumbing. Not convenient, of course. There's no, no taps you could work inside the cubicles. They had to yell out if you wanted anything. Drop of hot in number six. 
course, everybody else was yelling out at the same time. Cold in four, hot in two. <laughs> Bedlam it was in there sometimes. They had a brill cream machine in the corridor. In a way, I'm, I'm glad they pulled the baths down. One less thing to think about when I get out there. Well, I, I better brave it, I suppose. I must be getting on. I'm having goodbye drinks with me relatives tonight. Cheerio, Sergeant Happy. It's been really pleasant having a talk with you. Bye. Stupid tit. Some enchanted evening Oh, and you see your true love Oh, and you hear him call you Across a crowded room Then fly to his side And make him your own Or all through your life you Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, I had not intended to appear this evening, being as it is, as you probably know, the evening before my wedding day. <laughs> the lyrics of that song were sincerely meant, Arthur. Truly they were sincerely meant. I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I have been very kindly blessed in having been given two husbands, or perhaps I should say one and one to come, who were not only very close to one another, my Arthur was my William's adopted brother, but both very, very fine men. The reason for my brief appearance is in order that I might be able to say Farewell to my cousins, Mr. and Mrs. Benj, who unfortunately will not be at my wedding. Because early tomorrow morning, they fly off to a wonderful new life in Australia. And I wish them all the luck in the world. And I'm sure you do too. <laughs> Ray and Marge. Ray and Marge. Ray and Marge. <coughs> well, this is nice. Yes, it is. Yes. It was Ray's idea. Very nice idea. Yes. Well, it's, it's nice of you all to take the trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. No, no. No, we couldn't no. not. No, not with you going to the other side of the world. Oh, no. How are you uh, managing tonight, Ray? Oh, we've still got the bed. I sold that with the F and F. Now then, how about a little drinky? Large scotch, please, Molly. Oh, I must just ask one thing first. Is it anyone's round? Yes, yeah, Dennis's round. Ah, well, uh, I was going to say have one on the house, but uh, if you're into a round, I won't interfere. No, it's Dennis's round. Large scotch, please. Don't start, do we, please? I'm not starting. He told me to get work. I've got work. A large scotch, please, Molly. Only joking. What sort of work, Uncle Tommy? I'm doing a commercial. Large scotch, please, Molly. Very good to me and my son. Yes, well, why don't we all have the same as we had before? It was 4 90 last time, Dennis. Uh, Sean. Tough. I'll put the change in the guide dog box. This is nice. Yes. Have you caught him at it? Not yet. Well, he definitely is. I know. He's had too much for comfort. Look at him, There we are, Mrs. P. All the very best for tomorrow. Oh, 
Thank you, Sean. You are wonderful. I don't know what we'd do without you. How's Stephen then, Daphne? Oh, Stephen's fine. It's fine as can be expected in the circumstances. Oh, poor Stephen. Whatever happened to Nina's mum? She's at a club in Evervale, looking after the bunnies. Here we are, then. Oh, thanks, yeah. Mama. Cheers, all. <laughs> now, then, <laughs> I'm sorry you won't be able to be at the ceremony. Oh, well, you didn't say the date of your wedding, see? And we didn't have a choice of flights, not with Bargain Air Services. And Bargain was quite the best way to travel. Was there much of a saving? Oh, yes, a wonderful saving. We were lucky to get it. I saw this advert in his plumber's news. He wouldn't have seen it. You fly direct? Well, no, not really. But I think it's very good. Which route do you take? Oh, London to Luton by coach, Luton to Rome by Air Sardinia. From Rome to Athens, we're with the Yugoslavs with a stopover at Belgrade on the way. Change airports at Athens. Athens to Delhi by National Kashmir. We stay overnight in Delhi in the comfortable lounge and then take an internal down to Bombay. Bombay to Singapore, direct by Argentinian. Then, however, we do it a snake. We have to change tickets in Singapore. It seems the PATC, that's the Pacific Air Transportation Company, and the Argentinians, they had a bust up some time ago and they haven't got passenger transfer. However, there is a man at Singapore Airport we have to meet, and we've got his description and everything, and he does the paperwork on the spot. And they've given us their word, it doesn't take long. And anyway, we won't miss our connection because there's a built-in 17-hour delay. Oh. And they give you a meal voucher for 50p, which I'm told should cover everything you need down there. The PATC take us from Singapore to Perth, Perth to Adelaide with the APAA, Adelaide to Sydney with the SAAP. We do the whole trip in just over five days. At that distance, I think it's very good. Oh, yes. And they have to feed you while you're in the air. So if you think about it, that's quite a saving. Yes, <coughs> it is. I think it all sounds wonderful. Yes. <laughs> It's a new life, away from everything. And he'll make good, I know he will. He's always at it in him. Just waiting for the right place to bring it out. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marge. You had too many lagers, that was it. Good night, sweetie. Good idea. I'm sorry I have to go, but you can't stay here the night before your wedding. No. And Shirley and Dennis will look after you. I'd rather be with you. Arthur, you don't just want me for my pub, do you? Of course I don't, darling. A thing to think. <gasps> well, that thieving barn will get a shock tomorrow. The till was short again tonight. But I've put invisible dye on the fibres. He'll have green fingers in the morning. <laughs> and he won't get it off. Aren't I clever, sweetheart? Yes. Till our wedding, then? Yes.
how can you be really sure that this new mixer for dogs is the right one for your dog? Well, when the makers of Pedigree Chum give their name to a mixer, a new mixer, specially made to complement canned dog foods, when top breeders have helped to develop it, and when it feeds as well as this, with a crunchy taste you can see dogs really enjoy, then you just know you can't give your dog a better mixer. New Pedigree Chum Mixer. You try it. You never know when colds or flu will strike your family. But when they've had a temperature and are off their food, remember the Lucozade. Lucozade's not just refreshing, it's glucose energy in the most natural form the body can take. Could I use my skateboard today? You'll soon be well enough, won't you? Hope so. It's part of getting better, because Lucozade aids recovery. Is your pain reliever the number three bestseller? No, it's not. Number two? No. Or number one bestseller, Anadin? That's the one. Why? For headaches. Why particularly? Anodin. Well, I just find it's fast. It gets to the pain quickly. For headaches, take Anodin. Anodin is the number one bestseller. What are you doing, Frank? Having some cocoa. Yeah, I, know, I couldn't sleep. I mean, it's these developments. It's very strange. About Pam, you mean? Yeah. Well, it's lovely for her. But what does he see in her, Daphne? That's what I keep asking myself. Oh, I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Well, she's not only a twit, she's a twit with twins. You're so unfair on that girl. You really are. You don't think he's a poof, do you? Oh, no, he's not. How do you know? Well, I don't know. I mean, well, I just don't think he is. Because they'll sometimes marry anyone when they're trying to look legitimate. Oh, Frank. No, 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 no. I expect he's all right. What well, I don't understand, Frank, is I thought you'd be so pleased. I mean, I was worried myself before this afternoon. I thought he might be stringing her along, but when he said what he said, when he sat there... Yeah, well, what did he say? Well, you heard him. Yeah. Well, I understood him, didn't you? I suppose so, yeah. Well, they've got an understanding, that's what it is, as soon as she's free. Well, I thought you'd be so happy, I really did. I mean, Pam's father-in-law, the manager of your branch of the Streatham Life, your son-in-law, sub-manager, somewhere else. She's got have a good, steady husband and a good, steady job. And to make a lovely home for her and the twins. Well, I thought you'd be so pleased. I mean, it's what you've always wanted. Ever since the day she was born, it's what you've always said. Oh, this is it, Daphne. This is just my point. It's somewhere, somehow, there's got to be a snag. She should be so lucky. Oh, God, Pam! Pam, shut him up, shut him up! I've got to be up early in the morning to give Molly away. Hello? Marge. I beg your pardon, Marge. Uh, I don't know. How the hell should I know? Do you know what time it is? For God's sake, Marge. I'm a working man. Look, Marge. Ma, ma, look, look, ma, Marge. Ma, ma, I'm trying to say. Look, Marge, I shall do what I can. I shall ring you back. 
Now, just stop panicking, and I promise to ring you back the moment I find out anything at all. Bye, Marge. That was Marge. Right. Stephen, it's me, Paul. Can't one of the others go and look for him? They live nearer than you do. They won't go. <sighs> I've got to. He was in my patrol. You better take your compass and your semaphore flags. Oh, ha, ha, bloody ha. so as not to wake the kids. Well, Pam moved out from downstairs the day you disappeared. I thought the kids to mum and dad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, right. I should have guessed you'd have done that. Dad searched for you all over the place. He wanted me back? Oh, yes. He didn't want the twins, that's what you mean. No, he'd be really pleased to see you. I, I know he would. And what about Pam? Oh, her too, of course. Nobody else been chasing her? Um, not as far as I know. Nobody special. I don't know. I came back thinking, I shall stay with Stephen till the kids wake up. Then I'll just walk downstairs and throw up my arms. She'll look at me. She'll run to me. We'll hug each other like bears in one passionate embrace of togetherness. Then I'll make the muesli, and we'll get on with life as it ought to be, enriched and enlivened by being apart. But would she see me as the prodigal? Or would it just be the return of the bum? I don't know. And should I chance it anyway? Or should I just bum off again? We're riding along on the crest of a wave and the sun is in the sky all our eyes on the distant bloody horizon who's in there uh, uh, it's only me sherry oh uh, a bit of tummy trouble nerves i expect it won't be long Of course, you never met Nina. She's very nice. She's Uncle Tommy's daughter. Um, illegitimate, you know. I suppose that's what did it in the first place. I mean, I nearly married Iris. It seemed only natural to marry her half-sister, if you follow me. Not really, no. Well, it seemed natural to me. That's why I took her to Corfu for our honeymoon. That's where Aris runs this bar with this um, Yugoslav cook she lives with, see? And I, th I thought we'd all get on like a house on fire. Well, I was rather ill, though. Something I ate in that bar. I spent most of the honeymoon getting over that. I only got better the day before we came back. I was right, though. I mean, Iris and Nina got on very well. And Nina also got on well with the brother of the cook. And she decided to stay, and I came back. But I'm quite all right. And I got Ray's allotment. And I'm looking forward to that. 
Who is it? Dennis. Dennis? Dennis Tonsley. Dennis Tonsley? Goodness sake, Ray. Hello, Dennis. D do you want to come in? No, no, no. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm just out for a stroll. Oh. Oh, well, you better come in then. What are you doing up here? Well, Marge <coughs> phoned me, of course. Marge? Isn't she asleep? Of course she's not asleep. Couldn't have phoned me if she'd been asleep, could she? Oh, dear. Well, I left her asleep. Well, she's not asleep now. She's phoning half London looking for you. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. How did she know I was up here? She didn't. I guessed. Do you want a cup of tea? <clears throat> Ray, it is not time for a cup of tea. You're off to Australia at eight o'clock. I'm going to a wedding at ten. I'm Arthur's best man. Don't you think it's time for beauty sleep? Well, I'm not really tired. Look, Ray, I'm going to talk to you very quickly and I want you to listen. I know. I know. I know how you're feeling. I know why you've come down here. I know you're afraid to leave. I know you're frightened about Australia. But you love England. So do I. Rule Britannia, Princess Anne, Sooty, Gardener's Question Time. It means a lot to you, it does to me. But look at it this way, Ray. It's only a wrapping. Don't you see? You take it off. Put on a new one. Put on Donald Bradman and Walsing Matilda. And goodness knows there must be something else. It's you and Marge in a new land, Ray. Give it a chance, for goodness sake. It takes a bit of bravery, but be brave. Jump off, have a go, my son. Marge could be right. It could be paradise in now. Oh, yes, this looks it, but it isn't. No, 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 this is a cosy cop-out, mate. You don't want to leave. I understand that. But think of five years, ten years, growing carrots on your own, Trudging back to an empty flat with no marge to make your tea for you? It's not on, Ray, is it not for you? When I was leader of Swallow Patrol, you always came to me for advice. I'm giving it now. Take heed of it. Go. What are you talking about, Dennis? Australia! Go! Go to Australia! Go! Well, of course I'm going to Australia. You're going? Of course I am. Marge is going, I'm going. Well, what are you doing hiding down here, then? I'm not hiding. Well, what are you doing, then? Well, I came down to turn over the compost heap. I forgot it, you see. I, I woke up, I remembered. Had to come and turn it. I mean, I, I couldn't let Stephen take over without, could I? Had to have a cup of tea. I I'd been working hard. Oh, I must leave him the money for that. After all, he has paid for the F and F. Marge. Oh, was that it? Oh, that's very nice of it. Look, good luck down there, Marge. Send us a postcard. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> oh, are you waffling? Yeah, I think so. I think it's for the best. Don't say you saw me, eh? Oh, no. Um, you could go out by the door, you know. Oh, no, 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 don't trouble yourself. I left my sleeping bag just below. Cheers, Stephen. Cheerio. Bye. 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 See you soon. 
no looking back. No. I hope the wedding goes well. Don't say it will. Those crazy munchkins. They'll stretch to any length to get their hands on McVitie's Jaffa Cakes. The light sponge, dark chocolate and smashing orangey bit drives them bonkers. But sometimes their plans backfire. I won't let the munchkins munch your Jaffa Cakes. Washing? Oh, dreaded it. Until Phillips, the people who developed me, made the Super Variatronic. You can depend on it completely. I do. It's got a powerful electronic motor I wouldn't mind having myself. And the tub's moulded from special hard-wearing material. Just like me. What's more, Philips guarantee them both for ten years. <gasps> Cope with anything this one. Day in, day out, it'll never let you down. Philips. Machines that go on and on. Now, inside every bag of Pedigree Chum Mixer, you get a can of Pedigree Chum absolutely free. And remember, you can't give your dog a better mixer. This is the Canon Mizomatic, just £149 plus a £30 trade-in. And there's interest-free credit, too, at your local British Gas showroom, now. St Ivor Gold is unique. It contains half the fat of any margarine. Yet it's made in a dairy with vegetable oil and real buttermilk for a buttery taste with half the fat. Gold from St. Ivel. Yes, love? Uh, the menu, please. There's pie and chips, chop and chips, steak and chips, sausage and chips, chicken and chips, place and chips, place, peas and chips. No matter how much you love chips, there are times when you need a change. So Ross have brought out oven crunches. Real pieces of potato baked in the oven. They're as tasty as chips, only different. Well... Oven crunches. With chips? Oven crunches from Ross, the name that stands out in the freezer. Beautiful, Molly. Very splendid. Thank you. It's very sweet of you to give me away, Frank. It's at times like these that one's proud to have been born a Benj. Well, we're not a bad crowd, you know, taken on the whole. <laughs> you do think I'm doing the right thing? Of course you are, if it's what you want. I'm very fond of Arthur and I, I trust him. I think trusting is very important, don't you? Oh, yeah. Excuse me a minute. Sean, uh, would you mind coming over here, Sean? It's a pity Ray and Marge had to miss it. Yes. Still, no good weeping over loved ones past. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look magnificent, Mrs. P. Oh, thank you, Sean. Why are you wearing gloves? Gloves? Yes, do you normally wear gloves when you're cleaning the bar? No, Mrs. P. Then why are you wearing them today? Today? Yes, you're wearing gloves. Oh, uh, I've got a bit of a rash, Mrs. P. Oh, dear, I am so sorry. You must let me have a look at that. Take your glove off. Take it off? Yes, take it off. Turn it over. Uh, now take the other one off. 
another one off. Turn over. Oh, Sean, I... I am sorry about that. I'm... Uh, I, I, I'm, I must give you something for that. Uh, get on with your work now. Thank you, Mrs. P. But uh, give me a port and brandy first, will you? I'm, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Yes, Mrs. P. Well, it's nearly quarter past. The bridegroom should be leaving Dennis's now. Good. Yes, very good, Arthur, very good. Uh, how's the stomach? How far? Uh, well, we, uh, we'd better be off then. Uh, Frank's giving her away. You know what he's like. Always bang on time. <laughs> Just one thing, Arthur, if you don't mind my saying, I think you should really carry those gloves. Carry them? Yes, it's the right thing to do. Oh, I don't think so, shall we? They wouldn't be gloves if they weren't meant to be worn. Uh, no, they are meant to be carried. Yes, well, I don't suppose it matters. It's a bit chilly out. I think I'll keep them on. They won't be chilly in the car, Arthur, and there's central eating in the town hall. I should take them off. I'm keeping them on. Yes, 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 you'll keep them on, Arthur. I'm sure it doesn't really matter, Shirley, uh, Arthur's gloves, after all. Well, come on, then. Uh, better be off, big... Uh, <laughs> better big day. Um, what a pity Ray and Marge <laughs> had to miss it. Eh? Well, well, well. Rolls Royces, eh? What's the matter with that? Nothing, nothing. No point in skimping on a day like this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. He won't last the whole day. We were very nearly late ourselves. Robin, that is Robin Grant. That is the son of the head of Frank's branch of the Streatham Life. And indeed, Robin is himself the sub-manager of the Merton branch. Well, he was going to drive us down himself. But at the last minute, the poor man rang to apologise. It seems he's been taken ill. Oh, dear. What's the matter with him? Keep your tum. Oh. Where's Stephen got to? I don't know. He should be here. Well, I expect he'll turn up. Yes. I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, but shouldn't you carry the gloves? I'm wearing them. Oh. What a shame Ray and Marge had to miss it. Mm. Here we are, then. Molly and Arthur, in a few moments I shall ask you to step forward and I'll conduct a very simple ceremony. But before I do so, I'd like to say a few words to you that perhaps you may remember in the years to come. The vows you are about to make are simple and short, but very solemn indeed. Do I like to think of them as the beginning of a voyage? A voyage on a ship called marriage. Well, it's a good ship, a strong ship. But like all ships, it's no better than its crew. There'll be fine days on that voyage. There'll be fine days and fair weathers. But there will be stormy days and dangerous reefs. Why, I, Arthur Lloyd George Pegler... Why, I, Arthur Lloyd George Pegler... ...should not be joined in matrimony to Molly Gwendolyn. Pegler? Shall 
have not been joined in matrimony to Molly Gwendolyn Pegler. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, now you, Molly, please. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, Molly Gwendolyn Pegler... Why I, Molly Gwendolyn Pegler... Uh, ...should not be joined in matrimony to Arthur Lloyd George Pegler. Should not be joined in matrimony to Arthur Lloyd George Pegler. It's very good. Now, the ring. Will you place the ring on the finger? Uh, not with a gloved hand, I think. Right. Take off your glove. Uh, yes. Oh, you best take the gloves off. No, I don't. Take think your gloves it. off. I said take them off. It's all right, Molly. You will take them off. I said take them off. Molly, take your gloves off. You will take them off. You will. You little thief. Take them off. 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 Will you kindly continue with the ceremony? Through life's sweetest groves, may you stroll hand in hand, two lovers together oh, yeah. in happiness land. Oh. Uh, love, Sue, Sid, Vi and Co. Oh, oh, Sid and Another one here. Uh, um, bottoms up, uh, but carefully. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's Bert and the Brewery Boys. The one from Luton Airport. Oh, Ray and Marge. Ray and Marge. Marge. Yes. Uh, Ray's best trousers left at Jackson's Cleaners. Uh, oh, um, uh, no, uh, worry about that one. Uh, <laughs> your two hearts together in one love unite and your marriage be blessed in sweet heaven's sight. Ron, Gladys. Oh, can I speak to Robin, please? Oh, hello, Mr. Grant, sir. Um, it's Pamela. Pamela Redstone. Well, I'm the daughter of Mr. Benj. Uh, uh, you see, Dad, the thing is, I am sometimes a tit. I know you are, Dennis. No, no, hang on a minute. I want to explain this to you. I say things, right, stupid things. That's right. Like this thing about the job. That's you, right. You wanted some money. I gave it to you. I said something stupid about getting a job. That's right. I, I didn't mean to say that, Dad. Right. But you got a job. Right. Yeah, and you chucked it. Right. Yeah, bloody good. Yes. That's bloody right. good. That's right. Anything, anything I can do for you, Dad. Anything. Any time, right? Right. Right. I didn't get paid. Yes. Oh, Mr. Grant. Oh, yes. Oh, dear Lord, are you sober, Frank? Oh, of course I'm sober, Daphne. Well, you better not stop at Mr. Grant like that. Oh, God, what a crazy Grant. You know, Arthur, sometimes I'm a very silly woman. A very silly woman indeed. Oh, she's not. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something now, and you won't believe this, but... In the registry office, when I asked you to take off your gloves, you remember I asked you to take your gloves off? Yes, I remember. Well, you must have thought it very peculiar. <laughs> well, of course you did, and I, I should have trusted you, Arthur. But it's because you're a pegger, and my William was a pegger, and Lord knows I had to believe the worst of him. But I should have trusted you. I realised that, but I had to see your hands. Because of this, you see. I told you last night I'd marked the money and the tool was light again and he wasn't marked, so I thought it might have been you, my dear. 
Yeah. Well, I shall certainly ask for my money back. Fun fixed guy does not appear for three hours, then will not rub off. Oh, well, wait a minute, there's something else here I haven't seen. After 12 hours, evaporates away. Have to try again another night. Yes. It's all right. It's all right. Nothing, Shirley. Shut up, Pam. What's the matter, Frank? What is it, Frank? It's nothing. It's nothing. You can't say it's nothing. Well, oh, to them, it's nothing. No. Oh, he's gone. He's left me. Who has? Robin has gone to Morocco to vegetate. Oh, where? To what? Mr. Grant's just uh, told Frank. Oh, all right, all right. Let everybody know. Tell the whole world. Robin's gone to Morocco. He's left his father a note. He's trapped to set him life. He wants to vegetate. Vegetate? Vegetate? Vegetate. They must have known it all along. They must have had the air tickets when he talked to me. When he said what he said. He said all that. He said nothing, you sobby day. Hello, Dad. Hello. Oh, Paul. Paul, you come back. What's happened to you? What's happened here? Fell off the drain pipe outside Stephen's window. Oh, Paul, devil. I'll be so good to you. We'll be so happy together. I know we will. Oh. Any man. Bit closer. Bit closer. What are you there? Yeah. Will you move in a bit on the right, please? Stop. Come on, Sophia. Come on, you come in this. Sophia? Oh, Sophia, this is Dad. We met in the hospital when I was waiting for Paul. Hello, Dad. Right, everybody, now it's hi, please. Hello. Right, love, I could just have everyone's name. Mrs. Oh, Pagan. Rose, yes. Uh, this is my uncle Tommy, Tommy Tomsey. He's married to Rose, and Rose is the auntie to my cousin Frank there. Frank is married to Daphne, and they are the parents of Stephen and Pam. Now, Pam is married to Paul, and Paul, of course, is the brother of Shirley, who is married to Dennis. And their son is Christopher, and Christopher's grandparents are Tommy and Rose. Bargain air services went bust. Could someone lend us the taxi fare? That was the last in this series of Born and Bred. Next week, there's a second chance to watch choreographer Kenneth McMillan in action creating A Lot of Happiness.